I welcome you all on this Moksh Academy a PG career series session. In this COVID world, have to you know conduct these online sessions. Uh, but traditionally, we have been you know training students for the USMLE and the licensing examinations, and for the you know informative uh, you know awareness, we used to actually do uh, in-person sessions across India. So you know thanks to COVID, now we are completely online. But yes, uh, happy to help you in this entire uh, journey. All right. So I'm your host today, uh, Chirag, and I'm going to you know run through this entire conversation today with our guest. Uh, today's session is something kind of an insider info, or you know, a kind of a, a glimpse to what exactly is a journey of somebody just like you in a medical school in India. How did he actually, you know, overcome uh, possible obstacles? So we are proud and uh, you know happy to have uh, somebody uh, from your fraternity, uh, Dr. Jinendra Lalit Satya. He is very much from Bombay. He completed his MBBS from the prestigious uh, Grand Medical College, Sir JJ Group of Hospitals. So just like you, you know, he had his dream to you know pursue a U.S. residency. He further went on to do his MD in internal medicine from University of Miami, subsequently moved to NYC where he is a chief medical resident for New York Medical College. And currently he is pursuing his advanced hepatology fellowship at the prestigious Beth Israel Tikonis Medical Center, a teaching hospital of the Harvard Medical School in Boston. His interest includes medical education, hepatology, and gastroenterology. So I welcome uh, Dr. Satya on behalf of the entire student community. So thank you very much, uh, doctor, to be part of this session. Any opening remarks, you know, before we start this power pack questions uh, for you? Thanks so much, Virag. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to young students and uh, hopefully provide them uh, insight and answer questions which uh, can be useful to them in their uh, decisions uh, along this uh, long but rewarding journey. The CV or the curriculum with A. All right, so uh, the first question, you know, how important is CV in your residency application? Yeah, I think I think that's a great question and, and we can spend some time on this. You know, uh, as I was mentioning, the differences in the examination styles in the two countries i think it's important to talk about that and go back to that because you know unfortunately everything in india is based on one score really so outside of that score whatever you've done in your career does not matter so you either have a good score or you don't and that's how you get your specialty and the city that you want to work in so that's not how it works in us assembly so yes us assemblies are important you want to do well on your on your steps you don't want to fail you don't want to have attempts but having said that, you know, you don't, if you don't get a good score or if you're not in the 99 percentile, it does not mean that you cannot get a residency. It might change matters as to what kind of residency you can get. For example, if someone, so the highest, so the most wanted specialties in the United States right now are dermatology, orthopedics, and plastic surgery, along with radiology. So if this is something that you want as an IMG, you really have to be having 260s and 260s and 260s. And that's not the case for everyone. That was not the case for me. Um, so most of us who come from India, you know, traditionally want to apply either for internal medicine or pediatrics. I would say those are the two big residencies that people apply for. There are other things like pathology and surgery, but that are very less common. So, you know, I think it's really important and it's it's good to know that people are thinking about this so early in their careers you know i thought about this in my third year of medical school i would say if someone's really determined that this is what they want and they know that in the first year of medical school you know they can gear themselves to that kind of learning uh and that and trying to beef up their cv so talking about the cv itself for the residency eras application as i'm not sure how many of them on the phone call have already seen the eras but as everyone knows, you know, there are a lot of different sections that you fill out in ERAS. And I think one really important way to know what all you need to do is actually to look at that application itself. And I think it's available online. You can just Google it and find the application. 
and you will realize when you see the application that you, the scores are just one part of it. There are 10 other things that they will ask you for, like publications, your rotations, your uh, extracurricular activities, you know, your hobbies, uh, what do you do in your time off, uh, how do you like to volunteer. And the United States places a lot of focus on, you know, what you do as an individual outside of being a physician. So it's not just the scores. I can tell you myself that I did not have 250s. You know, I did not have the scores that I would have liked uh, when I was thinking about US MLEs. But, you know, there are different things that you can do to beef up your CV. And, you know, it all really depends on your interest. But there are some things that everyone should have. And the key is to have an all rounded application. Uh, you don't want to have very high scores, but nothing else on your CV. You know, that other person might think that all this guy can do is write a test well but other than that he's not doing much so that's not who they want they want a good well-rounded personality you know someone who can work well as a team work well with others which is very important in in the united states um so you know for people who are early in the medical school in india i think the ways they can try to start working on this right now is you know get involved in things outside just of your uh, medical, you know, subjects and test taking skills, you know, volunteer for uh, clubs, uh, road track clubs around the city, uh, you know, do, but, you know, having said all of this, it has to happen. It has to be in something that you're interested in, you know, yes, it's important, but if you're not interested, let's say in volunteering or a road track club, then you should not do that, you know, because the, the end point is not, is not going to be what you want um but uh research so i think research is important uh you know not everyone likes research and if this is something you like you know you should really try to start early in medical school you know working on small things like case reports and such you know which you know mentors in india also are happy to have young enthusiastic students help them because they're so busy you know so trying to get some research in is important uh, of course, you want to have some exposure in the United States. You know, things have changed in the last seven years. Even when I was applying for my electives, you know, there were certain hospitals that were closing down in terms of accepting IMGs for elective rotations. And that has kind of continued. And, you know, there are fewer and fewer opportunities available for you to do rotations, which is important for you to get the exposure you know, know what it's like working in a hospital here in the United States. And also, of course, you know, getting that letter of recommendation, which is, you know, moving, and, and we'll talk about this later, is, is an important part of your EROS application. So in summary, I would like to say, you know, it's not just your scores. Yes, you want to have a good USMLE score, but what they really want is a well-rounded uh, individual. Perfect. Again, I will stress on a specific thing which you have mentioned, you know, because Again, you are from the Indian system. So can you give tips on uh, things Indian students can do, you know, in the Indian medical education system? Uh, maybe uh, year on year or during internship, which can actually help them enhance their CV. Right. Yes. So I think, you know, once uh, the US MLEs are done, once you've taken care of that, I think it's important to focus on some research. Of course, again, if you like, you should try to work, you know, in and ideally you want to be doing research in the specialty that you want to apply for residency in so you know the you know the people who are looking at your cv they want to see your interest and your passion for that subject going back five years they don't want someone who just started doing research in one field and now he's doing something else and then he's doing something else they really want to see that passion for let's say internal medicine come through through your mbbs and through whatever else you've done after that so there has to be a line of thought and some thinking behind what you're doing it has to fall into place with your end goal and especially that you want to apply for and match in uh while in medical school i think you know getting involved with extracurricular activities such as college festivals you know every big medical school in india has at least one if not two college festivals and trying to get on organizing committees um you know, as I said, volunteering outside of medical school in, in the society, you know, things like uh, Red Cross or any other medical societies running medical camps like blood donation drives. These are all things that I did. And, you know, these may seem small, 
but uh, these these are things you can put in a CV and when you actually fill out the ERAS, this is something you'll need. And although it might seem small, all of these small things put together, you know, helps you uh, when you're actually applying. Yeah, thank you. I mean, there were very interesting uh, tips, you know, which you have shared.